and welcome back to another video. So today we have got growing up in the Philippines as a Korean, my story. Everyone is telling me to react to this one and I really can't wait. I love it when they uh, I react to the culture and the history and the, the countries and everything a bit of general about different around the world for me to acknowledge and and appreciate everything. I appreciate life and I enjoy seeing every single bit of it because we're only here in the world and we need to appreciate everyone and respect everyone. Let's spread some love and respect to everyone. That will be the number one thing in on my list always and that's the one thing, that's my number one thing that I, um, as a mother, show my children. So let's go ahead and react to this video. So if you're new, hi my name is Samantha and welcome to my channel. If you're not subscribed please do subscribe because many more videos will be coming along and the original video that I'm going to react I will leave it down at the bottom. So please go and watch it. So yeah let's go ahead and see growing up in the Philippines as a Korean. When was the happiest moment of your life? This is the question that I get asked for several times in my life. To answer this question, I must go back to the day when I first visited the Philippines, when I was a playful, wild, and adventurous nine-year-old kid who came to the Philippines to learn English. Hey guys, it's Jessica here. In celebration of the National Foundation Day in Korea last October 3, the Korean Cultural Center took a part in the Philippine Star newspaper to raise awareness about both countries, Korea and the Philippines, friendship. Thankfully, I was able to take a part in this project by writing a few words about my experience of living and studying in the Philippines for about nine years. Wow. Yes, you guys heard it right. I was on newspaper the filipino newspaper Yay! so thank you so much to you guys for making this happen for me and also the korean culture center as well wow. now i'd like to discuss more about why i really consider the philippines as my second home it was the winter of 2009 when i first flew to the philippines okay it was a very special trip for me as it was my first time going outside of korea okay. and also first time riding a plane i was also excited to try the famous mangoes for the first time I as know mangoes, mangoes were something that i only saw in pictures or on tv okay. but call it a small city with a peaceful and beautiful smile this is where i first settled in the philippines most of my childhood memories and the happiest moments of my life linger there wow. this is how my classroom in the english academy looked like we called this room cubicles where we had one on one class with teachers. The idea of a teacher for me was someone who I had to look up to and obey to unconditionally until I met my English teachers in Bacolod. I remember that they treated me with full respect, compassion and warmth despite me being the foreign kid who never opened her mouth because I did not know how to speak in English fluently by then. My teachers would try hard to communicate with me by bringing up subjects or topics that I would be interested in, which was food. They would get me different like Filipino it. snacks and candies like Milo and Max. Street foods like banana cube, mm. muko juice, even pancit canton and more. Some I'm teachers would now. even pack some food from their home just to share it with me. Oh, By I this time that. though, I didn't even realize that what I tried were Filipino food. Food was just food and I enjoyed everything because it was just so delicious. I also enjoyed being able to swim in the sun every single day. Because me and my brother loved swimming, we even had a swimming coach who taught us how to swim. And yes, because of that, I was always suffering from sunburn. <laughs> Through food and playing, I got really close to my teachers, to a point that we would hang out outside of the English Academy. One time, my mom and my teachers prepared a surprise birthday party for me, where I had an amazing time. It was not simply about making a formal relationship with my teachers as a teacher and a student. It was about forming an intimate bond with them as human beings. Yes, there were yes. teachers who my family was specifically close to, like nuns and unis. 
they are basically my ates. They would sometimes invite us to their houses for parties and get-togethers. By the time I was on the top of the world, when I would get invited to Nanda's house on the weekends, her family was not the most prosperous, but rich in spirit and full of the joys of the spring. They always welcomed me with open hearts and offered me the best things to give: delicious food, a warm bed. And most importantly, their precious time. I experienced my、Whoa. very first Filipino parties at her house, like on Christmas or New Year's Eve. This was the time when I realized, for the first time in my life, why people party: bonding, sharing good food, dancing, singing、yes. karaoke, playing games, and simply having fun、memories. together with her family and neighbors. Taught me what it means to make pure happiness.、Memories. Interacting with my Filipino teachers. Respect and appreciate. Way I just saw myself fitting in the environment in the most natural way. They, my teachers, are the ones who fed my spirit as a child. They are the ones who just never really failed to make me happy. As time passed by, my family decided to move to the Philippines permanently in the year of 2011.、Okay. Before me and my brother's school year started, our family spent a lot of time with this Filipino family we met through our swimming coach. They were from Silay, and they helped my mom a lot with all the paperwork to settle in the Philippines. Me and my brother joined our coach's swimming team, representing the city of Silay. With the family of the members. Of the swimming team, I made lots of unforgettable memories. So nice. Traveling to different places, sharing each other's hobbies, and more. We、yeah. bonded as if we were a real a family. family. This、exactly. is also the time when I naturally learned about the major characteristics of Filipino culture.、Yeah. Well, not only learned. But actually practiced it as if I was already a part of the Filipino society.、Excellent. I will never forget my first day of my school in La Salle, Bacolod. Oh, the uniform! I really hated how it looked like, but I got used to it as time passed by. It looks At first, cute. The I、uniform. had a hard time at my school because my English wasn't great. But、the、as I became good、fantastic. friends with my classmates, the barrier of language、yet. wasn't a problem anymore. At some point, my friends would just talk to me in Ilonggo because I was able to understand it. Also, I was a part of a wide social circle in my school because, thanks to my Silay swimming team, I got to become a swimming varsity of my school. I made friends with swimmers from other schools through this opportunity, and most importantly, I met this person. He was my new swimming coach in La Salle, Coach Guangco, who would always make、Guanco. funny jokes to me to、wow. make me feel comfortable、okay. as I was.、Quiet. That is so. That is so weird.、Uh, it's not weird, but Guangco. Yeah, if you spell it in, if you spell it differently in Spain, it's Juanjo, and my dad's call it that. <laughs> I just wanted to point it out because when she said Juanjo, I was like, oh my god, that's like my dad. <laughs> Quite scared of him at first. As I got yeah, close、yeah. to him, I remember I would always compare my height with him, waiting for the day I would get taller than him. And I don't want to sugarcoat <laughs> all my words and say that everything about the Philippines was about the joys of the spring. Just like every other student, I had my ups and downs in my school life. I had crushes, MUs, if you know what that is, haters, and one time I even got bullied. I can go on and on about all the elementary days drama, but I'll stop here because if then this video will last for more than an hour. After my sixth grade graduation in 2013, my family went back to Korea during our summer vacation, and this is the time when I unexpectedly began my K-pop trainee journey. The rest of my family went back to the Philippines in June of the same year, while I stayed in Korea with my dad. To learn more about my K-pop journey, please refer to this video popping up over here.、Wow. I went back to the Philippines in 2015, but not、okay. in Bacolod anymore. Our family moved to the Manila area. Manila was a whole new world compared to Bacolod. They spoke in Tagalog, which had a stronger tone compared to a softer Ilonggo. When I first went to Makati, I could not believe how different it was from Bacolod again. 
The time when I went to an international school by grade nine, I suddenly started to think. About the social environment of the Philippines, which was the enormous gap between the rich and the poor. I look at my right, I see shabby towns and children begging me for money in the streets. I look at my left, I see a fancy village with house gates as tall as the palm trees. I got confused. Also, being in this kind of environment made me ask fundamental questions about life. This was the time when I got interested about the Filipino society and started to study its history and culture more deeply. In 2018, I started my YouTube channel after completely quitting my K-pop journey in Korea. At the same time, I also got into the modeling industry in the Philippines. If you are curious on how I got my modeling oh, journey well, started in the Philippines, please refer to this subscribe. video over here. As I got into the modeling subscribe. industry and I also got to start my own YouTube channel, I was able to get several work opportunities where I learned not only even more deeply about the Filipino society and the culture, but also about the life being at work in a professional manner. The beginning of my work life in the Philippines allowed me to immerse myself into the Filipino society even more. And at the same time, I also noticed myself getting more attached to the country because of how interesting the country was, you know, in terms of its history, its culture, um, the Filipino personality and all that. It was, I would say, one of the most unique countries that I know of. My high school life in my new home in the Philippines was indeed a memorable one. I was welcomed by another great community of people, experienced the ups and downs of my life again, but this time yeah. with such thing as consciousness as I was no longer the foreign kid who knew nothing about the Philippines. One of the most memorable moments of my high school days is when I organized this mural project at a local village in the Philippines. You can check out the series if you like, and I recommend you to because it's my favorite content in my channel. By March oh, of 2020, I finally graduated my high school in the Philippines. At some point yeah. of my life in the Philippines, and also whenever I visited in Korea, I noticed myself considering the Philippines as my second home. By home, yes. I mean a safe place that brings me comfort and a sense of belonging, a place of growth exactly. where I can learn to become a better version of myself and perhaps where I could always Perfect. return to my truest self. Whether I want the Philippines to be my second home or not, it will undeniably remain as my second home. And I also want it to be my home as well. Mostly because as how this video started, if someone comes to me and asks, when was the happiest moment of your life? I am immediately going to think of my time in the Philippines, right? So wow. this was a pretty much very summarized story of a young Korean girl who's been living in the Philippines for around half her life. I would like to yeah. thank you guys again for your love and support always. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. fantastic message. Me seeing these videos makes me appreciate every time and and I do not give up on humans and humanity and life because sometimes it's so hard when they bomb you with lots of negativity and and tell you and constantly bad things happen into this world and then Philippines they bring me so much um, something that I always admire from people to appreciate life no matter where you are no matter how much money you've got if you've not got anything just appreciate that you're living and and always respect that and always show so much love and compassion towards 
the people that are surrounded by you, people that love you and appreciate your family and friends and feel them like as if they were your own every time. And for me, that is so important in life is, is to love yourself and love life and love the people that are around you and appreciate it and respect it never doubt it just just appreciate every moment and that is very important and she tells you it she's so nice oh i need to subscribe to her channel so i will leave her channel down at the bottom so you can go and check her out and subscribe to her i don't know who she is i just I really, really admire the message that she has given us through this video. So I thank you so much for telling me to react to this video. Like I said, I will leave the original down at the bottom and any comments, any other new suggestions that you would like me to do, please leave it down at the comments. And yeah, I hope you all have an amazing day. Please do take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.